Rainbow Six Siege is a game that released about a year ago, and is still going strong. New DLC and patches are constantly being added to it, and it is still completely relevant today. That's why I'm bringing you this Rainbow Six Siege review, which will include facts about the game and some of my personal opinions. Please enjoy. Before I get into the ups and downs of this game, I'd first like to describe exactly what type of game it is in the simplest way possible. There are three game modes, which include multiplayer, terrorist hunt, and situations. In multiplayer, the players are divided into two teams, blue and orange, attackers and defenders. At the beginning of each round, each team chooses their operators, a soldier with a unique gadget used to eliminate or hinder the opposing operators. Once everyone is chosen, the game begins and the attackers and defenders get to work. The defenders fortify their position on the map by setting up explosives, reinforcing walls with bulletproof shields, and setting traps. The other team, the attackers, spends the same time using the remote controlled drones to try and find where the enemy team is located and then plan out their way of attack. The timers end and the attackers are dropped into the map with their mission to either eliminate the entire enemy team or to complete a certain objective such as defusing a bomb, extracting a hostage, or securing a position. Once the round ends, the winners are decided and this goes on for at least four more rounds until a certain team wins. In Terrorist Hunt, you and up to four other friends or random people play as either the attackers or the defenders while you fight off large amounts of AI terrorists. The terrorists have none of the special gadgets that you have access to, but their large numbers and weapons make them a true challenge to deal with on high difficulty levels. The final game mode is Situations, which in some ways is more like a tutorial than anything else. You're put into a single player mission playing as one of the many operators in a unique mission with special objectives that give you extra points and money for completing. This is as close as you can get to a single player campaign in this game, which is a thing that me and many other people really wanted to play in this game, but we were unfortunately disappointed when we found that this was the closest thing that we had. Now that we've got that all out of the way, I'll talk about the game and how it actually plays and how it pairs up to other shooters on the market. If you enjoy Call of Duty, Titanfall, or maybe even Battlefield, you might not enjoy this game. There are no Rambos in this game, and if you try to be one, you will most likely die before you can get a single kill. The guns in this game have strong recoil, but they hit really hard. Most guns will get you killed in only one or two headshots with no problem, and maybe five or six bullets to the body depending on whether you're using an SMG, assault rifle, or a DMR. Entering buildings or breaching rooms is nothing to take lightly to say the least. You never know if walking through a doorway could trigger an explosion, or if you could get shot in the face from a sneaky guy hiding behind a table at the other end of the room. You never know if there might be a person diligently watching the window that you're about to pass by, ready to blow the C4 charge place just out of view. All of this doesn't mean that the defending team's job is any easier though. There's always a moment of silence right after the round starts, where everyone stops moving to see if they can hear where the attacking team might be coming from. There's nothing quite like sitting in a perfectly silent room with your teammates, only to hear someone slide down a rope and place a precision charge on the boarded up window right next to your face. In this game, there's a strong emphasis on planning, teamwork, strategy, and accuracy. Trying to take on the enemy team without any planning or backup will most likely get you killed before you can aim down the sights of your weapon. There's also a strong reliance on cover. Because you die so fast in this game, using cover can be your biggest advantage. This leads me on to my next point, which is destructible environments. Nearly 50% of the walls, floors, and roofs and furniture in this game can be blown to pieces with a couple of shots from a shotgun, and they can easily be punctured with SMGs and rifles. If you can easily destroy it in real life with a sledgehammer, you can probably destroy it in this game with your fists. This means that you need to choose your cover wisely. The destructible environments in this game are excellently made, and I can't think of a single game that's done anything even remotely like what Rainbow Six has done, even Bad Company 2. Everything has its downsides though, and this excellently made mechanic is no exception. With the large amount of destructible environments that people can shoot through, 
You will sometimes be left feeling like you were cheated when you get shot through a wall or killed by an unfortunately placed breaching charge on the other side of a door. There's also a special gadget in the game, which is exclusive to the defending team that allows the user to see an enemy's heartbeat within a certain distance. This can be the cause of a lot of people getting shot through walls, doors, and or windows with no way to have avoided it. As I was saying earlier, at the beginning of each round you can choose an operator to play as. There are currently 26 operators and at least two more have been confirmed to release in the next month or two. You can unlock these operators for in-game cash called Renown, which is unlocked slowly by playing the game. The operators that were released when the game launched are relatively cheap and each one can be unlocked within three or four multiplayer games. However, the newer characters will take several hours to unlock unless you choose to pay for them with real cash. The newer operators don't really have any extreme advantage over the base game operators, and they're quite balanced. The base game operators are all very believable, with realistic weapons and gadgets, which you wouldn't be surprised to see already invented, or invented in the near future. The newer operators have been kind of moving away from that theme in a bad way though, and a lot of them have ridiculous outfits and gadgets. The biggest example of this being a woman with the ability to interrogate enemies in the down but not out stage to get them to give away the locations of their teammates, and a male operator who has a crossbow which shoots exploding fire arrows. There are currently 13 maps, 10 of which came with the game and 3 of which are DLC maps. The maps offer a good deal of variety for the most part, and they range from being to in the tropics to being dead in the middle of frozen northern Canada. The maps range from being placed in a modest suburban home, to a biker gang's clubhouse, to a commercial airliner. You won't be spending much time outside of the maps to enjoy the environments, however, since all of the objectives are placed indoors. The biggest variety that will affect the gameplay is the amount of destructible environments placed around the map. There are certain maps that are practically made of cardboard, and then there are other maps that have a good mixture of indestructible walls with destructible ones. The maps are about the perfect size, which means that they're just big enough so you have to really try to find the enemy, but they're small enough so that you won't ever not find your enemies. Despite the maps being small, they're quite complex, and they have several points of entry and ways to move about them. This means that you can own the game for months and still not have the maps completely memorized, unlike other games such as CSGO, where you can navigate the map blindfolded after only two rounds of play. One quick glance at the Steam review page for this game, and you'll understand that the community at Rainbow Six Siege is fantastic. That is, when the people that you're playing with actually use their microphones. Probably 50% of the matches that I've joined have no one with a mic, which is extremely unfortunate considering how much this game relies on communication. It's not exactly practical to stop in the middle of a firefight and type out the location of the enemy in the text chat box. When your teammates use their microphone, it's truly a great experience. The majority of the community is kind, helpful, forgiving, and sometimes even funny. You'll have a hard time finding people that blast music through their microphones or scream for no reason at all. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever met more than two microphone users who are actual jerks, as most of the annoying people tend to stay exclusively in the text chat. Overall, the graphics look very nice, they're detailed, and they don't disappoint. I do have some minor complaints though. Occasionally you might notice that some of the textures are a bit blurry and grainy at distance, and sometimes certain objects will blend in with the background, especially other players. And sometimes I've often found myself mi mistaking a swivel chair for the dome piece of an enemy, or vice versa. You could have taken this as a positive or a negative, depending on how you look at it. It might encourage people to be more careful when they peek into dark rooms, but it might also be the cause of some really undeserved kills from places that the enemy might have thought that they checked. Another small complaint that I have is the overwhelming light that comes through windows on certain maps. If you're playing on defense on a map set in daytime, peeking out of windows safely can be extremely hard. If you're at the wrong angle, you won't actually be able to see out of a window at all because of the ridiculously bright sunlight that shines through. This makes peeking and attacking team extremely dangerous at certain times, and I think it's something that really needs to be fixed in the next patch. 
Before I finish off this review, there's a few smaller things that I'd like to address that don't exactly deserve a category of their own. First, I'll start off with the attention to detail. It's the little things that count on this subject, like the ability for riot shields to protect your back from bullets while they're being stored there while not in use. Other examples of this would be when your teammates' bodies can interfere with the lasers on friendly claymores, making them disabled while the person is laying in front of them. Another point that I would like to address is the sound design. I personally enjoy having the music off because it can be pretty distracting in my opinion, but the sound of footsteps, gunfire, and other objects in the game is absolutely fantastic. Like I said earlier, there's nothing quite like sitting inside of a fortified objective room in perfect silence, only for it to be broken by the distinct sound of an enemy placing a precision charge on the window while a flashbang cracks in the room next to you, only to be followed by deafening gunfire and explosions. The sound design is absolutely stellar, and I couldn't ask for anything better. The last point I would like to make is how well Ubisoft handled the DLC for this game. There isn't a single bit of content except for certain cosmetic items that is locked behind a paywall. This includes weapons, maps, operators, everything. While it might take you a couple of hours to unlock some of the higher level operators, it's not such a grind that you feel like you really have to pay money to get them. This isn't too common in new AAA games, and I'm really happy that Ubisoft decided to go down this road. I'm not going to sum up this review into a number or a percentage or anything like that, because finding an accurate score for everyone would be absolutely impossible to do. Everyone has a different opinion or preference on what kinds of games that they like, which makes it impossible for me to tell you whether you would like this game or not. I hope that by listening to what I've said, and watching the gameplay that I've provided, that you can come to a decision yourself. For me personally, a Battlefield and a first person shooter player, this game is a must buy, whether it be on a sale or not. The perfect mix of strategy and action is a formula that I have never seen before, and the destructible environments are unmatched by any other game. I hope this review has helped you to make a decision about this game, and if it has and you would like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you have any thoughts or constructive criticism, please comment down below. Thank you very much.